Happy Cinco de Drinco. As someone with a Spanish middle name, I feel like I am more than qualified to teach today's poor choices, which is deep fried deviled eggs with an avocado filling. Impress doctors on your next visit with the highest cholesterol they've ever seen. We're gonna switch up how we hard boil our eggs today by using our sous vide. But then the rest is simple. We just make our filling, batter our eggs, deep fry them and put it all together. Top it with a little bit of chorizo and you are good to go. Fun fact, in 11th grade, while I was in my Spanish class, I just randomly opened up my book to the back where the uh, dictionary section was, and I saw my middle name there. I was like, wow, I never knew it was Spanish. And when I asked my parents about it, they had no idea that it was Spanish. By the way, I'm like the third John Holland in my family, so that means this name has just been getting passed around for generations and no one's had any clue what it meant. It could have meant booty liquor. Starting out, I got my sous vide set to 168 degrees and I plan to cook these for one hour. The cool thing with the sous vide is you can gently put the eggs right in, no bag sealing needed, and just let them go. Less chance of leaking since they're not bobbing around in boiling water. I do want to try this process again and do an ice bath right after because I had trouble peeling the eggs in a manner which would yield pretty results. An ice bath helps greatly in separating that thin membrane between the shell and the cooked egg whites. I've also read that using really, really fresh eggs sometimes can make the peeling difficult. So some recipes will recommend using eggs that you've maybe had in the fridge for a week. So many different ways, so I don't want to discourage you from doing a sous vide, it's just these came out a little bit differently. I know when I've done uh, hard boiled eggs in the past with like my pressure cooker using like the 555 method, which is like five minutes high pressure cooking, five minutes uh, pressure releasing, and then five minutes into an ice bath, I've always got great results. So I'm gonna try this again, and don't get me wrong, this will make some great hard boiled eggs just for like everyday snacking, but I think I need to make a few little adjustments to do it for sous vide. Anyways, for peeling, just tap your egg on a flat surface to break the shell up and peel away. Also doing this underneath running water is good too. As I said before, I think sous vide is great for nailing that perfect interior temperature. You don't wanna undercook your egg, but you also don't want to overcook it. That's what that greenish layer around the egg yolk is when you see it. It is signs of an overcooked hard boiled egg. Anyway, out of the seven eggs I put in, I was able to get six of them to peel properly for me. Then I cut the eggs in half and placed the egg yolks into a food processor, but you can also just use a bowl here and mix by hand. And with that, I put a whole avocado in, a whole shallot, just lightly sliced up to help break it down. Red onion is fine here, I just always have shallots on hand. A twist of cilantro, maybe equaling two tablespoons or so, stem it all. Next is the juice of half a lime, then two tablespoons of sour cream. I then added salt, pepper, garlic powder, and a little cayenne pepper. This was to taste, with the salt being the priority here to get that filling just right. If I had to give measurements, I'd say maybe a teaspoon of salt, and I use fine sea salt here and then half a teaspoon of pepper and garlic powder, and about 1 8 teaspoon of cayenne pepper, it just depends on your level of heat that you want. Blend it up, give it a taste, and adjust the seasonings if you need to, and that is our filling now for our egg battering station. I've got three bowls here. One of them is filled with flour, maybe about a cup or so since I'm not making a ton of eggs here. I'm also adding some seasoning to this flour. This is the Cattleman's California Tri-Tip Seasoning. You can just use regular salt and pepper, but it's always a good idea to season your flour. I probably use about two tablespoons worth here, but don't be afraid to taste your flour. I'm not kidding. Tasting your flour will let you know if you need to add more of a certain spice or back off some. Dip a finger in and taste away. And if you're feeling unsure about how much to put in your flour or you just don't want to taste raw flour, by all means, it's fine to leave it unseasoned. It's just an opportunity to add extra flavor. To another bowl, I'm breaking up three whole eggs and whisking them up. That's right, we're dipping eggs into more egg. Then in the last bowl, we'll get some panko breadcrumbs. About a cup's worth is what I think I use here. I also added some cotilla cheese to the panko. Cotilla is just Mexican Parmesan if you've never had it, so if you can't find it at your local store, just use Parmesan. I'd say I used about one fourth cup of it. Mix and get ready to dip. Gently take your egg white, coat it first in the flour mixture, getting it all covered, especially that inside part. Shake off the excess, then to our egg wash, which again, make sure it's fully coated all over, inside and out. And then finally into our panko mix to get its crunchy outside. When you're finished on the panko mix, just make sure you turn the eggs upside down to empty out any of the crumbs that didn't stick. Repeat that for all the eggs. Heat up your vegetable oil, whichever oil you prefer to use, to 350 degrees and pop your eggs down until golden brown on the outside. Time could vary here, but just use your eyes to see when the color gets there. Remember, the eggs are already cooked, so we don't have the time for that. We just want to get good color. When they're golden brown, pop them onto a cooling rack. I recommend a rack versus a plate with a paper towel because we don't want to create steam and make our crispy exterior turn soggy. This is also a good time to hit them with some salt. Anytime you fry something, hitting them with salt immediately after taking them out of the oil is just going to allow some extra amazing enhancements of the flavors. Then I got the filling that we made earlier into a cake piping bag because I wanted them to look pretty. But you could easily just use a spoon or use the old Ziploc method and cut off the tip, essentially making a piping bag, but with the actual cake piping bag, 
You can use the tips to make cool designs like this. Fill up each egg and then I decided to top each egg with some cooked pork chorizo. You could do bacon here, but since it was for Cinco de Mayo, I went chorizo here. Or you can leave the chorizo off and just put like some smoked paprika on it. The options are endless. As for our poor choice, I did a simple ranch water cocktail, which is one and a half ounces of silver tequila, half an ounce of fresh lime juice, and four ounces of Topo Chico sparkling mineral water if you can't find it at your store. But the Topo is what really makes this a ranch water. It just has an extra crispiness to it that other sparkling waters just don't have. And that's it. These are going to go fast, so I highly recommend getting ready to make some more right after. And hey, this is Poor Choices. We have a Patreon link down in the description. One dollar a month is all we ask for. It helps pay for these recipes in these here inflated times. And I hope you enjoy this one. This is a great party appetizer. It's gonna be extremely popular at your next brunch or any type of celebration that you have. And happy Cinco de Mayo one last time. And I look forward to seeing you all next time. Peace.